Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to our third Wednesday program. I'm Miranda, the educator at Rome Historical Society, and today we are joined by Jennifer Waters. She is the Vice President of Business Development and Communications at Mohawk Valley Edge. So thank you for joining us today, Jennifer. Thank you for having me. Of course, it's my pleasure. Um, so Mohawk Valley Edge mission is to strengthen and grow the Mohawk Valley economy. And today's topic, we're going to talk about the developments at Griffiths Business and Technology Park, um, which is at the former Griffiths Air Force Base site here in Rome. So um, just a few things to remind our audience. Um, we've been offering our third Wednesday programs virtually since September, and we're going to plan to continue doing that through June. So you can go to our Facebook page or our website for the most up-to-date information on our programs. So that's facebook.com slash Rome Historical or romehistoricalsociety.org. And over at those sites, you can also donate to the Rome Historical Society. All those funds and donations will help us with more programming like this in the future. So if you consider donating, we'd really appreciate it. And we really appreciate all your support. Um, so Jennifer, why don't you tell us a little bit about Mohawk Valley Edge, recent developments at Griffiths Business and Tech Park, and what we can expect to see there in the future. Sure. Let me just share my screen. Great. So I work for Mohawk Valley Edge. We're a 501c3 economic development organization. Um, and how we work is we have uh, staff service contracts with a variety of other not-for-profits who are all in the same economic development realm. So what we're able to do is we're able to provide a suite of services, um, kind of soup to nuts, everything you need um, for successful economic development out of one office. Um, if you were to go many other places around the country, even around the state, you would deal with multiple people who would be in multiple organizations to get one project done. We've streamlined that process. And you're only dealing with one organization, one office, and many times you're dealing with one person who can then navigate the world of economic development for you. So one of the things that we've been lucky to do is through one of our staff services contracts with Griffiths Local Development Corporation, uh, we're able to help with the revitalization at Griffiths. And I say help because it truly has been a team effort. Um, not only our board of directors, but our stakeholders, um, our local government, the mayors, um, the county executive, the uh, county board of legislators, everyone has come together to really develop Griffiths into what it is today. So where did we start? We started with Griffiths Air Force Base. So Griffiths Air Force Base um, started in about 1943. It opened under the Air Combat Control Branch. Um, and then it kind of evolved over time really focusing on research, really focusing on electronics research. Um, in the 50s, Rome Air Development Center began, and it really, talked to, and it really started to identify um, different ways where electronics could aid in the warfighting mission. So 1970s, Strategic Air Command um, really focused on air refueling and long-range bombardment capabilities. So what does that mean? That means that back in the... 70s, 80s, during the Cold War, um, the Soviet Union did have three um, nuclear warheads aimed at Griffiths and the city of Rome. And we know that because in uh, 1988, the Post Standard, as part of a series of articles, um, got access to some federal emergency management agency reports um, that were disclosed in 88. So, um, and why? were nuclear warheads aimed at Griffiths because our B-52 bombers, which if you see pictures of Griffiths from the past, you'll see B-52s lined up on the runway continuously running um, because they're the only one of the only ones in the United States that were capable of delivering a nuclear strike against the Soviet Union. So really cool little factoid when people say that didn't happen. Uh, well, actually it was disclosed that it actually did happen. Um, so that was, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s. Uh, in 1991, um, the Rome Air Development Center was renamed Rome Laboratory. And then in 1993 to 1995, the, the community was kind of dealt a series of blows as the Base Realignment and Closure Commission uh, realigned Griffiths Air Force Base um, and shut the door. So we had an Air Force Base one day. The next day, we didn't. 
a lot of people said, well, what, what are we going to do with this Air Force Base? Um, it's just empty land. There's no use for it. Why don't we put a fence around it? Right? That's what the community, some people in the community said. Let's just put a fence around it. It will never be anything as good as what it was when it was an Air Force Base. Well, luckily that didn't happen. Uh, a series of stakeholders came together and really identified a strategic vision for what the Air Force Base could be. So they renamed it Griffiths Business and Technology Park. Uh, we were lucky that some of the um, Air Force um, pieces stayed, right? Um, the Air Force Research Lab stayed, some of the other smaller missions stayed. So we had a base to build on. So, but what happened in 1993, 1995? We lost 1,200 civilian jobs, over 4,000 members of the Air Force. So what does that equate to? That equates to 30% of Rome's economic base and 20% of Rome's population was gone. And people came together and said, you know, really, this could go a few different ways, but let's figure out how we can make the best out of a bad situation. So we retained Rome Laboratory, uh, which is now Air Force Research Lab. We retained the Northeast Air Defense Sector, which is now the Eastern Air Defense Sector. Um, and we also, in 1994, received a DFAS, Defense Finance and Accounting Service, back office center, all of which are installations we still have today and that are growing. Uh, what are some other things we got when Griffiths closed? We got 5 million square feet of building stock. Uh, most buildings built to no code. Um, with inadequate um, lighting facilities, electrical infrastructure, plumbing infrastructure. Um, we were left 55 lane miles of roads um, that nobody owned. Uh, we were left an airfield and aviation assets. Uh, we were left a rail spur. We were left over 2,000 acres of contaminated property that was actually placed into a Superfund site. So that's probably a story for another day, but I am happy to say that that 2,218 acres um, has been delisted and is currently in its remediation phase. Um, but the, we were left with a 3,552-acre piece of land. Well, and then really, we had to figure out what we would do with that. So uh, we have about 240 acres that is retained by the Air Force, AFRL, EADS, DFAS, the Veterans Administrative Administration Hospital. Uh, we had the building stock, the roads, the rail spur that were under no jurisdiction for fire or police or city zoning. Uh, and then we, ho we had the Air Force own infrastructure. We were left with our own telecom system, a steam and electrical distribution center, the, the airfield and all the airfield facilities. And so we took all of that and it was a monumental feat and really a credit to the Griffiths Local Development Corporation Board of Directors and Stephen Mio, the president of EDGE, um, for turning that into what it is today. So Griffiths uh, started as a technology park in 1995. When it was an Air Force base, it generated zero dollars in taxes. Now it generates, on average, about $3.7 million in taxes a year to school districts, uh, municipalities, and the county. Um, over 5,800 employees now call Griffiths home. Uh, the average salary now, which is really exciting because when this was an Air Force base, it was mostly airmen um, who didn't have a huge salary. Now it's turned into a really STEM business park with an average salary for those STEM workers of $99,000. Um, so really is a hub of R&D. It's a hub of high tech employment. Um, and it's really a great place for like minds to gather and really come up with some creative solutions um, to a lot of the world's needs. Um, and there's 17 or 17, 72 businesses um, currently located at the business park today. So we call it a mixed use business park uh, because there's not just one type of business. Yes, there's STEM businesses, there's R&D, there's technology, but there's also distribution centers. There's also a high school. There's also um, a convenience store. There's also um, banks and restaurants and all different types of manufacturing, food manufacturing, um, a bus company. 
there's all different types of businesses coming together in one atmosphere. We call it a vibrant center for private and public enterprise. There's tenants with global recognition, global impact, um, and it really has um, these different development districts where all these things are focused. So what kind of, what are the steps we had to take to get to where we are today? Really, we had to focus on capital improvements. And to date, there's been over $800 million of capital improvements made in this 3,000 acre business park. Um, that's an incredible number. Um, we had to demo buildings. We had to build new buildings. We had to rehab buildings um, that we thought would still be of use. We had to build new roads. We had to build new rail spur. Uh, we had to think about what we would do with a general aviation airport and how we could take that from um, an hindrance to an asset. Um, and one of the ways that we've done that, and really one of the, the best things to come out of Griffiths as a whole, was the designation as of Griffiths International Airport as one of seven FAA unmanned aerial systems test sites. One of seven in the United States, um, we really have some compelling R&D features um, and technology available at our test site that's not available anywhere else in the United States. Um, so it's really set us apart in terms of new growth and where we go um, in 2021 in the future. These are our development districts. You'll see the largest purple. Um, you'll see the largest purple section right there is all the airfield. The airfield does take up a major piece of the, of the pie. Um, you also notice the, the big piece on the runway called the triangle. Um, we see that really as a great opportunity for what could come next for the airport. Um, it's a huge piece of developable property that can be used for aviation purposes. Um, but you'll see there's also a nine hole golf course. Uh, there's rows of manufacturing facilities. There's rows of, of high tech facilities. Um, you'll see in the, the yellow section, that's all a nature preserve called the Griffiths International Sculpture Garden. Um, so we really have everything at Griffiths. So what are our anchors? Our anchors are the Air Force Research Lab. So we talked about this previously. Rome Laboratory became the Air Force Research Lab. Air Force Research Lab is really focused on C4I, command, control, communications, computers, intelligence, and cyber. Really, they touch every aspect of the Air Force, every aspect of the nation. And the things that they are doing there have really propelled the Air Force and the technologies that we know today um, forward. So they, every year, have a $467 million economic impact in the community, and that grows every single year. They have about 1,200 people that work here, a 65-acre campus literally located right in the center of the park. So what does having an asset like AFRL really mean for the park as a whole? It means we can do really cool things with, with partnerships, right? So we have a, a partnership called the Griffiths Institute, which is now located in the Innovari Advancement Center, who is able to take what's happening at the lab, help commercialize it, and get it out into the commercial marketplace. They're able to access the high degree of talent uh, that's at the Air Force Research Lab, catalyze that, and get that out into the community in terms of mentorships, internships, um, as well as helping kids learn about all the different STEM and technology fields in the area. We also have the Innovari Advancement Center. Um, like I said, it's where the, the Griffiths Institute is located. Um, it's right across the street from the Air Force Research Lab. And what it is, is it's a building that has many of the same features as the Air Force Research Lab, but it's an open environment. So any high-tech uh, high tech user, if it's um, a academia or a government stakeholder or a type of private industry can go in there, collaborate, uh, and work with folks from the lab in an open environment without all the different, going through all the different necessary steps that you would have to go into to get into the Air Force Research Lab. Um, so really this is a great way where our, re our region is able to accelerate all the different technologies that are happening at the Air Force Research Lab. So we have the Air Force Research Lab as our core and then branching out from that we have all these different high-tech businesses. Now, all of these aren't located at Griffiths Park, but many of them are. Um, and what it's done is it's created a high-tech ecosystem from here to Syracuse 
um, of all to Utica, all around of high tech businesses that are able to draw on each other um, for talent, for new ideas, um, for all different uh, aspects of their of their business. So where are we going in 2021? Here are some of our, our bigger projects that we have going on. We have the Orgel Distribution Center. So I told you that um, we have distribution centers at Griffiths. We have Family Dollar Distribution Center. And new this year, uh, it's under construction right now, is the Orgel Distribution Center. So this building is almost a million square feet. Um, one of the largest buildings in Oneida County. Um, construction's already underway. They're planning on hiring 225 people starting relatively soon. They've already started their hiring process. Um, but it is a 70 mil $71 million project. This is located on Skyline, on the Skyline development site right across the street from uh, Rome Free Academy. Uh, we're really excited about that. This piece of land once held a housing development. So the housing development was torn down. Um, some of the infrastructure was removed. Uh, we worked on actually grading the site, making it flat. One of the cool ways we're able to do that is just down the road, uh, we are developing the Marcy Nano Center site, um, which Cree is now locating uh, their high-tech uh, semiconductor fab on. We had to dig a lot of dirt there. So where are we going to put that dirt? Uh, we actually trucked it to Griffiths, um, and we're able to reutilize it on this site, um, saving both organ both sides of the equation, um, a lot of money and time uh, so that we got the site kind of where we needed it. So that when a company came in and wanted to build there, we were that far ahead of the game. We also have Air City Lofts. Um, so if you've driven around Griffiths lately, um, you'll see a lot of new buildings popping up um, right around the center of the park where Stewart's is. Um, right behind there, they're building new high-end uh, loft apartment buildings with commercial space on the first floor. We have buildings 1A and 1B already under construction, uh, and buildings 2A and 2B are also going to be starting um, construction. You'll notice 2B, I believe, um, has already been dug up, and steel is starting to come out of the ground on that one. Uh, this is creating a place so people can truly live, work, and play at Griffiths, right? So people can live in a high-end loft, they can walk to work, they can bike to work, they can enjoy all the amenities that Griffiths has to offer and be located right there. We deal with a lot of um, high-tech businesses and, and businesses who are hiring um, executives and things like that, and they always say one of the things that Griffiths and the surrounding community is missing is high-end housing. Um, Still on the affordable side, but a little bit higher end fixtures and furnishings. So that is one of the things that we worked on with the city of Rome. We put out an RFP for developers uh, to think a little differently about this site. There was a giant building on it. Um, it was an Air Force relic that um, we paid a lot of money to buy from OGS and then tear down um, so that this, this new development could be built. Um, we put out an RFP with um, the city of Rome and Bonaccio Construction out of Saratoga responded with an excellent idea on how to really repurpose this area into something completely new and completely different for the marketplace. This is what the building currently looks like under construction. You'll notice the, you'll notice the first floor uh, is commercial space and then there's uh, high-end loft apartments on the top. So Bonaccio Construction decided that they really liked um, Bonaccio Construction decided that they really liked the area. They liked the the type of construction workers they were able to get. They really liked all the different amenities um, that were here. So when two different um, high tech employers approached us about wanting some office space at Griffiths, we helped them develop an RFP and we sent it out onto the street. And Bonaccio Construction again. Um, submitted the winning proposal to build a new high-tech office building right in the center of the park next to Community Bank. Uh, this, is this is being leased to two high-tech companies who do a lot of work in the defense space with the lab. Uh, it's 40,000 square feet, three stories. Construction is, is on its way. I know that with COVID, things have gotten a little crazy in the construction industry, but luckily most of our projects are still on track to be completed in the time frame in which they were supposed to. Um, so this building is already fully leased before it even came out of the ground, um, and it'll be a great addition to the center of the park. So when we're out there, one of the things that Edge does is we market 
the region. We market um, specific parcels of land. We market um, specific places to the outside world. Um, and one of the things we get to talk about and that I really love the most is we get to talk about how Griffiths has gone from a Air Force base to a tech park um, that is now flourishing in, at 99% occupancy and really um, only has a few key development parcels left. You know, how did we go from empty to full? Um, and it really, it's a credit to the landowners themselves. Um, so one of the, the groups that we're lucky enough to have a staff services agreement with is the Griffiths Park Landowners Association. So if you own land at Griffiths, you pay something called a common area maintenance fee. That fee goes into a kitty. Um, it's about $350,000 to $400,000 a year. Uh, and this group of board members decides how that money um, will be spent. A lot of it is spent on lawn mowing, snow plowing, maintenance, uh, making sure the park is kept up to a certain standard. Um, but it's also really doing some fun projects, right? We have the Griffiths International Sculpture Garden and Nature Trail. And if you haven't checked it out, I really encourage you to go out there and take a walk. Um, we do plow it all year round. Um, usually it's one of the last things to get plowed once all of our tenants get plowed out. But um, we do plow it um, during the year. A lot of people actually go cross-country skiing on it or snowshoeing on it. Um, a lot of people walk, bike, run. Uh, it's about five miles of paved trails um, that are both stroller and handicap accessible. Um, there are restrooms located at the Ellsworth Road parking lot, um, as well as a handicap accessible restroom, as well as a normal restroom. Um, there's respite areas located throughout the park, um, throughout the trail. You'll see they're, they're noted by those red benches. Um, we have about 23 different sculptures uh, right now. We're always on the lookout for more. Um, but we've really got to partner with some great uh, different groups this year. So we partnered with the Rome Rotary, as well as the New Hartford Rotary, and planted over 50 new trees. Um, we are able to do some really fun projects. This summer, we'll be debuting our first disc golf course um, along the trail. Um, people run on it. There's road races. The high school cross country team uses it for their practices. Um, it's really a great community asset. So if, if you haven't been out there, I do, um, I do recommend it. And one of the great things about it is it does have a mobile app. Um, so if you go to the Android store or the, uh, or I think it's the Google play store now, um, or the app store and download art at Griffiths. Uh, you'll get a mobile app. And so that mobile app has a map of the trail because sometimes still people are a little hesitant to go to Griffiths because they're not sure what's up there. I thought there was still a fence up. We still get that. 25 years later, people still think there's a fence up. There's no fence. Um, you can park at any one of the parking areas. Those are all denoted on the map. Uh, you can see the whole sculpture trail. You can see all the different apps. If you have the app open while you're walking, and you walk up to a sculpture, that sculpture will actually pop up so you'll be able to see um, about the artist, get a little bit of backstory. You also learn about the different habitats at Griffiths. Griffiths had a fence up for a really long time, but like I said, it's not there anymore. Um, but that made some really interesting habitats. Um, so we've also denoted those on the app so you can kind of see um, all the different habitats. We have beaver and deer and all these different wildlife located literally at the center of the park. As I was leaving the office the other day, there were six deer just hanging out, hanging out outside my office door, um, eating off apples off of an apple tree. So we really have everything. You'll also see that there's bird houses and there are specific bird species we're trying to attract, um, bat houses and owl boxes, um, all located along the trail. And you can tell um, on the app where all of those things are. And so where, where are we going? So we, we have a few ideas for Griffiths of some industries we want to attract. We still really want to focus on the UAS, unmanned aerial system drone industry, uh, try and get some spinoff companies of there to locate at Griffiths. Uh, but like I said before, we don't really have a lot of land left. So what are we doing to try and fix that? We've identified several areas and developments throughout the park where um, we think have some potential. Our office right now, this is one of them, it's called Enterprise Way. It's the piece of land between um, Family Dollar and the airfield. Um, we're doing all the preliminary work to make sure that 
it is a viable site. There's no contamination. There's nothing there that shouldn't be there. Uh, it was left to us in the condition that we anticipated. We've started putting up mock buildings. Um, by, a by being able to show this to pers prospective businesses, they get an idea of what they're getting into. They can say, oh yeah, I can now picture my business on this site. So that's what we're doing right now for a few different key areas at Griffiths uh, to make sure that the park is well-rounded and has you know, all the different types of developments that we want. So if anyone has any questions, Griffiths Business Park does have a website, uh, griffithsbusinesspark.com. We actually have a new website that will be debuting probably in the next week or so, which will be very exciting. It's been a long time coming. Um, but I, the point we want to leave people with is that Griffiths could have been nothing. It could have had a fence up. Um, it could have been a real detriment to this community. But because of forward-thinking individuals, people from our community who decided they wanted to kind of create their own future, create their own destiny, um, they came together, they formed the partnerships that really made Griffiths what it is today. So that's a place that employs 5,600 people, that has 72 businesses, that has over $800 million of, an in, of investment, um, and it is a place that is constantly growing and will have people living at again. It's been 25 years since anyone has lived at Griffiths, um, and so we're excited to really come full circle on that and many other developments. Awesome. That was great. Um, if you could stop sharing your screen, that'd be good. perfect. Uh, well, thank you very much. I think it's awesome to hear from you and kind of just get an overall perspective of what's going on at the park because um, it's easy to drive through and not be able to see everything that's happening. So I think that's great. I also think it's great that you're taking a piece of Rome history and just breathing new life into it. And that's so important. And the Air Force um, is forever going to be part of Rome's history. And now I think Griffiths, the way it's developing is just going to uh, continue a, a unique history for the area. So. Absolutely. We're happy to do it. Um, yeah. So thank you so much. And uh, if anyone has any questions about this program, you can send them to me at educator at romhistoricalstudy.org or reach out directly to Jennifer. That would be great. Um, and we really appreciate your continued support. And so thank you everyone for tuning in today and watching our program. Uh, that's all we have, so we'll see you next time.